Hello, hello, my friends. Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Welcome back to my face and my card making space. And the bat light is on. Another Halloween card. It wouldn't be a Halloween series if I didn't pull out my absolute oldie but goodie favorite stamp set. Simon Says Stamps, Beautiful Flowers stamp set. I, if you have not followed me for any length of time, um, I have an entire playlist on my YouTube channel of videos I've done using the stamp set. There are more than two dozen videos I've done. I have used this set for many years. It came out about five years ago. It's still available because I keep using it. <laughs> That's what I will take credit for. You know, I don't have control over products, what things get stocked, retired, any of that. I have zero control because I am just, I'm, I'm an independent little card maker. However, things that I use frequently generally can stay in stock. And I, I use this stamp set so much that Simon's a stamp has kept it in stock. So makes me very happy. And yeah, I actually checked before I um, filmed this intro and it's in stock because obviously things sometimes sell out and take a while to restock, but it is in stock. And I know a lot of you also have it because I've given tons of ideas. Anyway, I will have a link at the end of the video to that playlist that has just, yeah, tons of ideas using this stamp set. I have used it so much. The stamp itself is stained black doesn't affect it any and if anything it actually it stamps amazingly because I use it so much so I will have a link to that playlist I will also have a link to my black gold and white cards playlist because that's another thing I love there's something about the color combo or mostly lack of color combo of black gold and white and I just I also love it and yeah I just I started thinking and I was like I want to do a black, gold, and white Halloween card. And then I was like, I want to use the stamp set. And the ideas just started to roll from there. So I will have a link to those playlists at the end. I will also, of course, have a link to my Halloween 2023 playlist because I've got more than a couple dozen videos in that playlist as well. We are very close to Halloween. Not sure if I'll get any more Halloween cards done for this year. We'll see. We'll see how things go. It's everything's always chaos, but I will have that. And yeah, I think that's all of the housekeeping info. Like I always do, I'll have links below to all of the supplies I used and I will have um, a link to my blog post, etc., etc. All that info is always in the description box directly below the video, but let's get right into it. And I'm going to show you guys how I made this card. Alrighty, so like I said in the intro, my stamp from this Beautiful Flowers stamp set is stained black, as you can see. <laughs> Good quality photopolymer does stain. I've mentioned this a lot and I will keep mentioning it. It does not stay clear. That's just the nature of quality photopolymer stamps. Black inks stain them and then basically any sort of red dye you know, your pink inks, your purple inks, your red inks, etc., are just, you're, they're going to stain your stamps. And honestly, the more they get stained, that means the more they're being used and the more they're being used, the better they stamp. This one stamps like a dream. For such a big and detailed stamp, it stamps perfectly. And that's because I've used it like a million times. Anyway, I have some Ranger Distress watercolor paper and I use my anti-static powder tool. And I stamped the large image with VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink, but I didn't heat emboss that. Although, and maybe I'll talk about that in a minute. I, I'm kind of thinking I should have, if I, if I could go back and like redo things just for the looks of it, but regardless, it turns out fine. But I did that first. And then the individual flowers in the set, I stamped with clear embossing ink and I stamped them a couple times to make sure I got the detail. And then I carefully applied gold embossing powder over those flowers. I purposely avoided the large image because VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink takes a while to dry and this embossing powder would have stuck to it and it would have looked gorgeous, but that's not the look I was going for. I wanted the main kind of main cluster to be black and then these individual flowers, which completely match up with the flowers in the main one, um, I wanted those to be in gold. 
So covered them with the gold embossing powder, melted that with my heat tool. And then to color these, I am using black soot distress ink and that's it. So I smushed my little black ink, black soot distress ink cube onto a little palette. And then I'm just using my little Tim Holtz detail watercolor brush and I'm painting these. I'm going to super speed this up, but honestly, like one, it didn't take very long to do this. For these, ma these main florals, these I just filled in. I'm not doing anything fancy. I just filled them in because I didn't want them to be white. Just in case you can kind of see them. Um, although when I use, I ended up using like Big Mama foam tape to adhere the embossed flowers, which you'll see later in the video. Um, but if I'd pop them up with more dimension, I didn't want any like white, you know, cardstock peeking out. So I just filled those in. For the leaves and whatnot of this image, I went much darker. Like just kind of kept layering up this ink and yeah, that's it. Like it just, just simple, simple coloring. Anybody can do this. This is, this is basic, not doing, you know, depth or trying to add shadows or layers or anything. I was like, I'm just filling this in, which is pretty much what I do most of the time. <laughs> Although that said, that said, um, I have been, you know, fiddling with watercolor and that, you know, using this, whether it's inks or actual watercolor, whatever, for many, many, many years, you know, just using inks to color in images with a little water brush. I've been doing that since I first started stamping like tw over 20 years ago, but actual watercoloring, like, you know, I've experimented with more and more. I, am I an expert? Not even remotely close, but I am a thousand times more comfortable with it than I was when I first started. That's just right where the practice, you know, the more you do it, the more comfortable you get with it. So when I say like, I'm just slapping the color on, that it's because I've done it a, a lot. So I don't want people um, to be discouraged because trust me, I, I remember when I first started dabbling in, in what I call real watercolor. I really, I, you know, I would watch people's videos I would watch like actually you know watercolor artists not even just card makers but you know and watch and it's like how 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 do you do this how do you know where to put things you know and more than anything you just got to start you just got to start you start fiddling and the more the more you do it you start kind of figuring things out and it's like okay this is this is where things are going this is how it's working this is what works for me and you just get more comfortable with it and just give yourself the freedom to just play with it. Get get messy with it. The more you get messy with it, the more fun it is. I'm literally like bobbing my head as I'm saying this, but it's true. <laughs> and yeah, I just, I it is actually one of my favorite ways to color is watercolor. And I, I, in a million years, I never thought I would say that when I first started. I struggled. And now I just, I enjoy it. And I just try not to overthink it. It is just a card after all. So after I colored this in, I die cut this and while it looks like I was really trying real hard to line up the eyes, I had like five million, there was so much chaos going on. I just, this, I didn't get this die in place properly. So I didn't die cut it proper, but I was not going to redo all this. I, I don't, I don't have the time. I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. <laughs> you guys get to see just, I make it work really. That's just, that's just it. I wish I had the time to like fine-tune things and perfect things and all of that you know and and all of it I, I really do it's but yeah anyway it didn't die cut the greatest I, it was kind of off kilter however I also didn't want the white outline now I've also mentioned this the white outlines when die cutting stamped images do not bother me in the least 99% of the time I just go with it I don't care it, the, I'm used to it you know um but for certain things, and for a card like this, I knew I didn't want one, I didn't want the white outline because I knew I was going to do a very dark background as well. And the white outline was going to be kind of distracting. And two, by covering it, it, it hides the fact that I die cut it completely wonky. Because like I said, I wasn't I wasn't going to redo it. <laughs> So I took a Copic marker. This is an N8. I started with a cool gray and I didn't like that tone of it. So I grabbed a neutral gray and I'm using a gray versus using just black. Um, I just had a feeling I was like black was going to be too much. I Again, I think like black would have been too distracting. So just a dark gray. The other thing I need to mention is I don't 
well, I don't endorse or recommend using alcohol-based markers on watercolor paper. Can you do it? Totally. It works fine. You can see I'm doing it here. For this edging, it's fine. However, if you do this like full-on coloring and you do it regularly, you are going to dry out your markers very quickly because watercolor paper, that's the nature of it. It just sucks up that ink like a sponge. The other thing I don't recommend is using alcohol-based markers with heat embossed images. There's something about the alcohol in the alcohol markers and heat embossing that like eats away at the nibs. However, caveat to that is I was just using the very edges. You know, I was just coloring the edges. I wasn't coloring over the heat embossing. I wasn't touching the heat embossing, so it's fine. But I just like to mention these things in my videos just because especially like, you know, COVID markers, those types of markers are an investment. They're expensive. And... I don't ever want to recommend something and someone like wrecks their markers, etc. You know, that'd be awful. That said, there have been many makers that do that color with uh, overheat embossed images and they have no problem. Um, but another option is color it and then heat emboss after, like restamp and heat emboss after. That looks amazing and it works. That's what a Misty is wonderful for. Okay, now onto this part. I trimmed some more of that distressed watercolor paper and I used another oldie but goodie favorite. Oh, I love this. This is the spiderweb background stamp from Simon Says Stamp. And my panel was four and a half by six and a half. So bigger than the stamp. So I purposely didn't stamp it perfectly. I used my anti stack powder tool. You saw I just pressed the stamp into it after I, or pressed it into the stamp after I'd inked it up with clear embossing. And then I used a brush to remove even more spots because I didn't want it to be perfect. There's something about like the missing spots. It's a spider web. It's a Halloween card. Embra embrace the messiness. And also it helps kind of not be so obvious that the stamp just ends. It won't really matter in the end because I'm putting like the florals on the bottom anyway. But I, I purposely made it more messy for funsies. And then for this background, I pulled out um, Distress Mica Stain, Empty Tomb, that I shook up very, very, very well. You got to, you know, fight that gravity, mix up that mica. And I also pulled out Black Soot Distress Spray Stain, which, who oh boy, this stuff is powerful. <laughs> I, and now, I, if I get some time, I want to play with the Black Soot Spray Stain to watercolor with. Because I was like, man, I wonder if I had just used that. I wonder what kind of results I would have got, you know? But this stuff, it just, oof, even with my splat box and my little, I have bamboo paper towels and everything, you, like it gets everywhere. Like it is, it is intense and I love it. So I sprayed the background with water. I added the black soot. I added some of the empty tomb, which is just going to add shimmer, which I'll show at the very end of the video with um, my flashlight. And then I kind of, I was like sopping up some of the excess with a tissue. I'm going back and forth, drying it a little bit, adding some, like I was just having fun, like just mucking around because I didn't want the background to be just like solid, flat, black, you know, I, I wanted, I wanted reactive ink, water droplets, all the things because these are distressed products. They react with water. That's half the fun. So I was just mucking around and get it literally it, it was everywhere I had it all over me <laughs> I had fun and I just used my heat tool my like embossing tool I've also shown using the ranger heat it tool either one's gonna work the only thing you really need to um pay attention to using like this embossing heat tool to dry things is because the image is heat embossed that's why I move my tool like I'm moving it. I'm not holding it as close as I would because you'll just re-melt the embossing powder. And if you keep overheating embossing powder, it will actually sink into your cardstock. Like it will liquefy and just basically disappear. Which again, sometimes that's actually a really cool look, but I wanted it to stay raised. So I just dried it, set it aside. And while I was doing all this, I was like, because I was going to use these ghosts, another oldie but goodie favorite that's in like a bajillion of my <laughs> Halloween videos, the Friendly Ghosts wafer die set that's also many years old. And I was originally going to do them in white because, you know, white ghosts. And I was like, oh, but what if I die got them from gold cardstock? Gold ghosts. How fun would that be? So that's what I did. Because I was like, why not? <laughs> why not? This is my video. These are my cards. I make the rules. I can do what I want. So I did. I die got them from gold cardstock. And then I also, another oldie but goodie favorite, the Simon Says Stamp uh, Spooky Salutations Sentiment Strips. And I just trimmed down the ones I wanted to use with my little guillotine trimmer. For all of my um, 
like I've talked about how like as I'm getting older, my eyesight's getting worse. I've got astigmatism in my eyes. It's hard to eyeball. For all of that, I can still, for the most part, eyeball pretty good with this guillotine trimmer and sentiment strips. I don't know why. I can barely deal with anything else anymore. But that's what I use. But also you could use, there's like the sentiment label, like sentiment strip wafer dyes and those sorts of things. Because those do make life a lot easier <laughs> when it's, you know, when I'm having those moments where I just can't eyeball for the life of me. But trimmed out those sentiments. And then I cut down some of Simon's smooth white cardstock to 10 inches by 7 inches. Scored it at 5 inches because it's going to be a 5 by 7 card because I decided I'm going to go bigger. Go bigger, go home. Um, I was going to go bigger with this because the floral image is enormous. And then I um, folded the card inside out and then just use some of my little purple easy C tape to hold the card closed. Put that in my Misty and then lined up that big uh, beautiful flowers image along the bottom of what will be the inside of my card. And I ink that up with Simon's flannel positively saturated ink, just a nice light gray ink. And then a couple of those little gold ghosts I'm going to glue to the inside of the card. And then a couple of the sentiment strips as well so that the inside's got, you know, something going on. You got to have something. So yeah, on the inside it says, you're so cool. It's creepy. Let's spook up some fun. <laughs> so got those adhered into place, adhered my little ghosts, and then that finishes the inside of the card. So once that's done, I'm going to adhere the now fully dry, um, heat embossed and splattered and mucked around with uh, background that, I can't remember if I said this, but I trimmed it down to four and a half by six and a half. I think I had said that, but anyway, adhered that to the card base. And then I lined up the big floral image and flipped it over like you could see there and used a pencil just to mark where the edges of the card are going to be. That was just so I don't place any foam tape past those pencil lines because I'm going to be trimming those bits off once it's adhered to the card base. So that just gives me a visual guide so I don't have sticky bits on the very edge of the card, you know. And then I'm covering the back of this with Simon's Big Mama foam tape. So it'll give it a little bit of dimension, but not a whole lot because this foam tape is super, super thin. So got that across all of this um, beautiful flowers image. Going to peel off the backing, fight with it a little bit because just it's always there's always there's always that one little random piece that likes to be frustrating. And then pop that into place, flip it over trim off those bits that are hanging off the sides and then those gold heat embossed ones uh, these again I'm going to pop up, pop up with just a little bit of this big mama foam tape so again a little bit of dimension but not a whole lot so once I've got those adhered I'm going to start adhering my little ghosties I'm going to trim this one a little bit because I wanted I thought it'd be kind of cute and have them come you know they're they're floating out from the flowers kind of like the fruit flies that have been floating around my garage especially with the flowers I have that were um, delivered last week that you guys have seen in my backgrounds and all that um yeah maybe that, that was maybe how I was inspired but instead of fruit flies I'm doing little gold ghosts <laughs> I'm actually kind of glad it's getting really cold. We've actually been getting a lot of snow here. It's been getting cold. You guys can hear my heater kick in and off during voiceovers and lives and everything else because it is cold. And the one thing I'm glad about is it, it kills off the fruit flies because, oh, they've been plaguing me. But anyway, anyway, I adhered my sentiment strips and my little ghosties. And then my final little bit of embellishment, I pulled out these pink fresh um, ombre glitter drops they've got a set of them there's several different ones the, this is the glittering mountains glitter drops and they have all different sizes and some are black some are black and green and some are black and gold so I pulled out black and gold ones and then just sprinkled them randomly throughout this card which don't show up much like right now but I'll of course show again at the end when I tilt everything in the light like so and yeah, once I got those adhered with little dabs of craft tacky glue, that finished off this card. I'll show you guys with the flashlight, the shimmer from that mica stain spray. So I got shimmer and little gold ghosties and super simple watercolor, a whole lot of mucking around for the background, which was just loads of fun. And yeah, that was, that was the card. So like I mentioned in the intro, I'll have links to those playlists I talked about 
in the end screen at the end of this video. I will have, of course, the links to everything I used in the description box below the video. So you can just expand that and check it out if you're interested. Thank you all so very much for taking the time to watch my videos, for thumbs upping and commenting, letting the robot overlords know you guys like what you're seeing. Subscribe if you haven't, I'd love to have you. And I'll see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.